we are beginning with our session on uh, state of travel startups in Taiwan and China. Daniel Cheng, as mentioned earlier, has come all the way from Taiwan to uh, give away this presentation. Uh, without much ado, I am uh, giving over the mic to him. He is the founder and president of RTM, Redefined Tourism Mix Mixer. So, uh, Daniel, could you please introduce yourself? Hello everyone, um, very pleasure to be here speaking with you. My first time in India, many surprises and in a good way and I like this place. So um, let me briefly introduce myself as a founder and the president of RTM, Redefined Tourism Mixer. That is an association in Taiwan. And also in my presentation, I'm gonna show you more statistics and the facts about Taiwan markets and greater China markets regarding the travel startup, technology, and the innovation. So please look forward to my uh, introduction in the following slides. So first of all, RTM is a Taiwan online travel industry. It's a B2B networking platform and a knowledge bank. So we were founded in 2014 with 200 consultants, 1,900 members, 300 events has been done in the past four years. Well, in the very beginning, we were like a networking platform, a like club. So many entrepreneurs gather together, mingle with each other, exchange name cards. And after four years, we are now more like an official organization. We are doing training program, educational program, courses for those people who work in in the tourism industry and also we do digital marketing for travel projects and b2b consultancy services for this year i would like to go abroad explore different markets in the world and i would like to do more b2b um, consultancy and matching uh, business for my hometown enterprises <coughs> This is the board members of my association they are all very good guy good men so with their supports, we can um, do a lot of impactful things to the government policy and to those uh, bigger corporates for them to do something right and something meaningful for Taiwan industry. Here are some statistics. So it's about Taiwan. Um, in 2008, um, from January to November, we have 15.4 million uh, outbound tourists, that's up in 6%. You have to have this uh, understanding that in Taiwan, we only have 23 million population. So this number occupies over 70% of the overall population. So Taiwan is one of the most travel-loving people in the world. And in the inbound side, in 2018, we have 9.9 .9 million. Um, Adding December numbers, it's going to uh, 10 million. So it stays there up 3.3%. So that is um, our achievements of attracting uh, people from different markets. Well, Indians going to Taiwan, um, only um, 38,000. So we are still striving to um, increase that number. <coughs> And then in 2018, Taiwan hotel occupancy rate, that is 61%. Inbound tourism income, that is 12.5 billion. It's down 13%. So we have room to improve our inbound income. But for the outbound, corporates are earning money because that is more popular in Taiwan. So from 2017 to 2018, travel startups, the total fundraising, it's over 100 million. We're still growing. And I'm going to show you more a briefing of that part. So for the government budget expected being put into local countryside communities revitalization for tourism, that is a lot of money, 3.3 billion. While travel startups with employees over 30 people has been 15. So these are the briefing statistics of Taiwan. Well, you can see in the outbound markets, every year we got tremendous growth. Considering that Taiwan is a mature outbound market, every year we are still growing 6 to 8%, which means in this uh, highly mature market, doing outbound business can still earn money. Our outbound market will be Japan as the, um, our top favorite destination. So we take the third place in Japan's inbound markets. 
And our inbound market, it stays in 10 million. That's what I uh, just shared with you. The tourism recept, 2.3% of total GDP. So in Taiwan, um, the highest value industry in terms of the uh, income and the receipts will be high tech. So like ASUS, like Acer, like TFCMC, these high tech companies, they are the leading corporates in Taiwan, while tourism still fights for its growth. The players of Taiwan tourism industry. So this is a small island country that's next to Thai, um, China. In this small market, still we have so many players. Over 3,000 travel agencies, nearly 4,000 hotels, and nearly 10,000 guest houses. So this is like highly um, um, penetrated uh, by those uh, tourism players. Okay, so let's see the history. Between 2013 to 2016, that is a peak time. That is a beautiful time for travel startups in Taiwan. Thanks to the technology advancement, thanks to Chinese tourists inbound to Taiwan, thanks to the capital that flocking into the startup circle. Many startups coming up, entering this market with their technology, with skills, with their creative products. That was the time RTN was founded as a platform for people to network because they have that need to exchange ideas and information. But in 2017 to 2018, it's getting down because of the capital withdrawal, because of all atmosphere changing, and because those entrepreneurs start realizing that doing travel business is not an easy thing. It looks like it has lower barrier, but actually, if you are someone who works in travel industry, you will know that this is an industry with so many challenges, and this is really difficult to earn money out of it. Okay, but in that low atmosphere, we still have some growing markets. For example, inbound markets from Korea, inbound markets from Southeastern Asia. Because of these markets' contribution, we stay 10, 10 million uh, inbound tourists, and many new agencies and new business model emerging because of, of new uh, business over there. And I believe India will be the next one. So in 2018 to 2019 onwards, we have these two philosophy. The first is that big remains big small fights for unique. So if you are someone working in the big companies, you need to maintain your strength. If you are someone working in a small company, you need to fight for unique products, providing your values for the niche markets. And then everyone needs to embrace global trends on OTA, online travel agency, those uh, Booking.com, Expedia, Agoda. They are, for us, they are kind of like enemies, you know, from abroad and entering the market and taking out all the, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, customers. However, we need to convince, you know, those hotel runners that they are not our enemies. They are our friends. We need to embrace them with more stronger digital abilities and work with them to get a better business. So this is the analysis. For the survival model of travel startups in Taiwan, we found that platform doing tourist activities, travel agency as a core income, as an OTA business model, and those hotel technology services, for example, PMS, data analysis, channel managers, etc. These are the travel startups that have survived from past four years and those fluctuation of the markets. While these are the dead or dying model. So if your business model is doing, well, we call it P2P, peer-to-peer, -peer, which is like you know travel expert matching, tour guide matching platform. If you are doing virtual reality or virtual game, if you are doing tour planning app that is just a tool instead of a business model or products that are able to be sold to consumers. If you are doing media and community, if you do an IoT or mobile app, these five business models will be easily dead or struggling because they are not highly connected with what consumers would need. So that's the realization of Taiwan travel startups. So let's take a look at the existing players striving for innovation. The biggest travel group in Taiwan, which is Lion Travel, it has 25 million US dollars as its market value, and it's a stock market. 
Um, it, 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 it stock market uh, it's rising 54% over the past uh, five years. While land travel, they are not tending to do the technology innovation. They tend to do more like conglomerate. So they develop their food and beverage restaurants, they develop their transportation company, they develop media company, they develop a marketing company. So they try to diversify their business model to earn money, to have income from different sources. That's what Lion Travel is doing. And the second biggest travel group in Taiwan, Cola Tour, they are doing the branding. So they are not diversifying. They don't want to be distracted. So they do the rebranding. They want themselves to be remembered by the customers that they are a travel expert. So they are doing technology enhancement to put their ecosystem operated with smoother efficiency. Also, there is a worth of introduction, which is ITF, International Travel Fair in Taipei, every November until this year, that has been um, 33 round of ITF. So different from what OTN is running itself, ITF is more like a B2C platform. So it looks like a festival. So from the top, you can see like there are so many people, they're so crowded. It's not like B2B travel fair that's, you know, to me, so quiet and so, like, you know, everybody so calm down. No. In ITF, everybody is crazy about buying products, looking for cheap or high-value um, travel itineraries, etc. With so many shows and performances here and there, it's like a festival. So that is very unique in Taiwan. Our travel fair, our OTM, is not like B2B quiet thing. It's a B2C market. So um, we believe that this kind of experience could be exported to somewhere in other markets. That travel fair could be a show, could be a festival, could be a theme park event. Apart from that, emerging um, startups that aim high um, in Taiwan, there are a few uh, worth of uh, introduction, including this Vipong, a data analysis company that has uh, a over 80 million market value. Oting Markets, okay, that is an online marketplace for local tours, farm products, hotel PMS, and it uses blockchain to do its innovation. So in 2018, it has a Series B US, um, 90 million US dollars, and now its total value is up to 150 million. Well, nice day, five years ago founded, it has 3 million US dollars. Asia Yo, that is a Taiwanese version Airbnb. It has 50 million US dollars as its market value. KK Day, that is the most obvious one. Um, it's founded in 2014, and now it has over 300 employees and 100 million US dollars. So KK Day and Kluke are two strong experience platforms in Eastern Asia. That is uh, available in, um, I would say, mature markets where so many like free and easy cu customers and backpackers, well, they are looking for something cheap, some like, you know, low price components, vouchers, tickets. They are looking for KK Day and Cook for those products instead of travel agency because millennials, they don't like group tours anywhere anymore. So they book rooms on Expedia, Agoda, and Booking.com. They book flight tickets through Skyscanner and they book components like experience, restaurants, tickets on KK Day. So that's how it succeeded in Eastern markets. Well, for now, it's a small version KK Day, but it focuses more on the metropolitan lifestyle products. For example, like massaging in Taipei City, watching movie in Taipei City, late night uh, booking uh, as, a, as a hotel providers, etc. And for now, has uh, successfully uh, rising 5 million US dollars uh, for the fundraising. 
My Taiwan tour, uh, that is a local reception uh, provider in the first place. But now, uh, because of its successful fundraising, it turns to a more like a customized um, auto uh, pro uh, producing uh, travel agency. And it's doing more like a My Asia tour. It expands its business stretch to Japan and China. And they are receiving those Westerners from North America and from Europe. So my Taiwan tour will be my Asia tour. Last but not least, Tripreso, it's a, a technology company. It's doing the meta search for those uh, outbound travel agencies in Taiwan. And it develops its um, ERP system to sell to those travel agencies that are cooperating and doing the meta search for them so they can win like income through two sources. Okay, so we have some challenges and problems. What holds Taiwan travel startups back? Limited domestic market size. We have only 23 million people in the island. So when we need to connect with different markets, we need to go across the ocean to reach out. So we cannot only focus in Taiwan. That's our first issue. And then inexperienced investors, because investors, they tend to invest in high tech, uh, in financial sectors in blockchain and AI, but they are less interested in travel sector, that is in Taiwan. And hardware thinking, because we are too strong in manufacturing. So in terms of um, software um, thinking, in terms of the service and the contents, we have room to improve. And weak international branding, because Taiwan is known for its manufacturing and some IT brands. So for the, for the travel, um, still, you know, way to um, um, pick up. And lack of government and traditional tourism corporate supports. That's the problem we need to convince more people to join, um, you know, the resourceful support. However, we have some opportunities for Taiwan, um, such as a lower property price, and we are more mature in cultural and creative industry, and we call it lifestyle industry, so that people, they are used to um, some more cultural, more responsible or sustainable itineraries as their travel experiences. They are looking for something unique. So for lifestyle industry, that is more and more welcome in Taiwan, which is developing its uh, lifestyle supply chain. High quality human resources because of high education and future fusion of high tech industry and travel. So we believe that those high tech companies, they will finally be in fusion with the travel sector as a innovation motivation. Okay, so. KOL becomes the most influential media over traveler in Taiwan. I think this topic has been discussed today from time to time. Also, it happens in Taiwan, but we have a little bit difference um, from yours. So in blog, we have PixNet. Internet forum, we have uh, DCAR, we have the Backpacker. And social media, um, Taiwanese is highly uh, penetrated by Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. So these three social media platforms I think are quite similar with the Indians. However, we have our instant messenger that is uh, used the most, which is Line. So in um, Taiwan, in Japan, in Thailand, these few markets are using Line, like you guys using WhatsApp. And we use Line as our main communication channel. So Facebook first, and then Line, YouTube, and PTT, that is online forum, and then Instagram, and WeChat, etc. So for your reference. All right, so you can see that um, for the influencers and the bloggers, in 2015, travel agency still gets the top leading position in the source of travel information for Taiwanese. But to 2017, blog and internet forum, it's on top already. In 2015, search engine um, and, and printed media still uh, take important role as the uh, um, source of information and uh, for, for, for Taiwanese. But in 2017, blog and internet forum has been on top of the second place already. Because they are more professional and customized, because they are more true and accurate, because they are doing the personal branding more reliable, because they capture the trend of the social media economy because they are doing better SEO 
So they have different sources of income, and these abundant sources of income push up this trend to develop and to create you know, more bloggers, more influencers in Taiwan. The other thing that is very fun, in Taiwan, if you are a foreigner, no matter where you are from America, you are from Korea, you are from Turkey, you have an international look, you are a foreigner, and you are doing blogging in Taiwan, you are introducing the contents in Taiwan, you are getting more and more popular. Because Taiwanese believe that since you are a foreigner and you are saying good thing, you are introducing good part about Taiwan, you are more reliable and you are more lovable. So these uh, foreign um, bloggers, they get popularity in Taiwan these days as well. So for conclusion, um, we should invest in KOLs. If you are a foreigner selling Taiwan overseas, would easily make you welcome by the local audience. And for KOL, um, uh, finding the, the influences for, for cooperation is a good thing uh, for your products. Well, this is the grassroots economy generation. Okay, so here are some snapshots of Taiwan tourism communities. From this guy on the screen, um, he is actually um, someone who play the role of a god when the temple has its festival. So in Taiwan, it looks like it's a more mature or technology-oriented country, but actually it still has its rich cultures. So let's take some snapshots. These are some organizations that are doing also the uh, travel promotion in Taiwan. For example, it's called Dream Travel Taiwan Association. I am one of the members there. They are doing a lot of uh, government policy advocacy, and they are doing some uh, like campaigns for promoting Taiwan to the world. And this is the Association for Asia Pacific Travel Developments. Also, I'm one of the members. So they are doing more like technology um, innovation in the travel industry. Well, Taiwan Inbound Tourism Association, they are doing the branding for Taiwan uh, through some cooperation of inbound travel agencies. Hostel talk, so they are talking about accommodation and hospitality. And this is Redefined Tourism Mixer, which is my organization that is doing a lot more like educational and knowledge works for the travel workers. So here are some photos for your uh, reference. Uh, this is my team with a lot of youngsters. And this is the training program we are doing uh, for the students. And this is the cooperation events. We are in cooperation with Skyscanner. This is another course for um, travel agency innovation. And we also would let some tour groups with uh, industry partners to China, to Shanghai, to Singapore, uh, to Tokyo, to participate in different international events. And we're also doing some local community um, innovation for um, this type of like countryside community. We're doing new things and new products to bring people there for their um, very local cultural experiences. OTA um, data seminar. And also this is an exhibition for Pingdong, that is a county in southern Taiwan. And the other um, tour leading experience to Shanghai to participate in Travel Daily Conference. The other class. The other class for OTA. The other class for Travel Startup. The other class for rapid fire talk of some entrepreneurs, some like uh, startup runners in Taiwan. And also the other class. And this is my team. It's a full-time job. It's a full-time employee team. So I'm so lucky to be surrounded by all the uh, lovely girls. OK, here is the second part of my presentation. I want to share more apart from Taiwan. It's about Greater China, Chinese region in Eastern Asia. So it's a travel, hospitality, technology development trends. So let's uh, keep on. So. I believe you guys will be quite familiar with these uh, brand names. They are the top um, APEC startups by funding. And they are more focusing on transportation and accommodation. So we can tell that in the consumer need, well, they are thinking about travel, accommodation, 
and transportation will be two things that are necessities for them. While experience, itinerary, tour guiding, information, media, all these will be not that important to them. That's why all these startups focusing on accommodation and hospitality and transportation will be welcome and invested. So that's the analysis of consumers' need. Let's take a look at China. Okay, BAT, I'm not sure if you guys heard this term. So B means Baidu, A means Alibaba, T means Tencent, that is the WeChat company. So all these three big groups, they start building up their ecosystem. So they are going out to Southeastern Asia, purchasing local company or heavily invest into local companies to make it a unicorn, to make it a profitable company, and then um, exert their impact there in, in Southeastern Asia countries. And because of their one belt and one road policy, they would like to spend money everywhere in the neighboring countries. And I believe that in India, China has its strength as well. Um, C-Trip is a monster, the leading, you know, um, top uh, player in China. Um, it's an OTA. From the statistics, we can see that in China, the demand mainly comes from still the domestic tours. Well, outbound, outbound tourists are still uh, um, slowly growing, but for inbound, it takes very little part of it. So in China, they are now in the early stage, just like what India is. They are doing the domestic tours first, which means for their growth potential of their outbound tourists and inbound tourists, that will be their next generation, the next chance to be um, um, strong. All right, let's uh, take a look at uh, Japan. Um, it's a Tokyo Olympic in 2020. It's aiming at 40 million inbound tourists, and not only Japan brand, but Asia brand. So they want to represent Asia as a destination. That is their ambition. So they put tourism as their new weapon. They target China, target Korea, and Taiwan as their main source of inbound tourists. And they do a lot of campaigns, including Ming Paku Law. So they make a lot of guest houses illegal, but they remake the law to regulate those illegal guest houses and use the other way to help them um, be legal so that these newly ego guest houses could be put on Airbnb, could be put on Asia, could be put on all those OTA and to be sold during the Olympic game. And that is very smart because they want to have a better image to the foreign tourists by this Minpaku law. And they do a lot of countryside revitalization so that people won't concentrate in Tokyo downtown. They can go anywhere to Japan's uh, different corners so that its economy could be all benefited by these 40 million inbound tourists. <clears throat> Regarding Korea, okay, it's a K-pop. It's Korean pop culture still um, takes a uh, leading part of its uh, export industry. So they use cultural tourism to attract people to visit Korea. So their idols and those idol PR and the campaigns make a lot of girls in China and Taiwan, they want to go to Korea because they love this K-pop so much. And then um, the new markets in Southeastern Asia and Muslims, they try to expand their source of inbound tourists while Chinese tourists slowly coming back. Um, Chinese tourists were stopped to, um, from going to Korea because of some you know, political concerns. But now, since it's defreezing, more and more tourists start going back to Korea. For the outbound, Koreans also is a taking off uh, market. Um, it's expected to have 25 million tourists in 2020. In Hong Kong, it's a um, small region um, that is very close to Shenzhen. Shenzhen is a new, uh, I would say, startup city for China that is doing a lot of innovation and it's uh, getting prosperous. Because this is close to Shenzhen and because Hong Kong 
it used to be a capital center and mice hub of North Asia. Um, adding on its talented experts, Hong Kong, such a small island, can produce Handy, can produce Klook, and the headquarters of Kayak Epic is located in Hong Kong. So the first two are the unicorns, startup already, while Kayak, it's getting its uh, strategic um, partnership with uh, local markets in Asia. All right. There are some other slides I want to share with you. Um, it's happening in Eastern Asia as well. So while online travel agency, all in one, by data, by flow, they start doing a lot of synergizing works. And then um, how can they synergize all you know, flow and data from different platforms? They connect with the API, and then they buy they buy or they invest into different platform so that all these big players, they get together as a bigger and stronger one. And that's the game, what China BAT companies, what those OTAs you know, from the world are doing and playing in Eastern Asia. <clears throat> and then like Ctrip, it uh, acquires Skyscanner, um, Kayak, acquires the Australian uh, Meta search platform, Hotels Combined, while Trip.com, that is uh, the invested company by Ctrip, acquires Easy Travel, um, the biggest, or one of the you know, leading travel agency in Taiwan, while Rakuten, PC, Home, and Line, they are doing some you know, new travel businesses. All these things happening you know, rapidly and um, that gives a great momentum for the online travel to develop itself in Chinese region. Well, in China especially, um, people are saying that online war has been over because all these big players have been solid in their businesses. So if you want to acquire new customer from the other one's um, platform or flow, you need to pay more. So when the cost is, is getting higher, people think that maybe offline battle will be the other cheaper game to start. So we can see, because of a lower CPC, there are new O2O ecosystem that has been formed in China especially. So like Xiaomi, uh, that is an IT manufacturing brand that is producing cell phone in the first, but now they are doing a lot of stores, selling a lot of uh, electronic products. And then Alibaba, it's an online platform IT and system provider, they are doing their own hotel, which is a manless hotel. So they are using their technology to create hotel for their future customers. Ctrip has over 7,000 retail stores around China. So they all realize that in offline world, it's cheaper and it might be the future of gaining new businesses and new customers. B2B services among OTA empires. So um, as what I said, many startups realize that doing business in travel industry is so hard. So there's still some opportunity for late commerce, which is the B2B services in the supply chain between accommodation part and OTA side. So we can see product management system, channel manager, data analyzing, revenue management, all these are still with opportunities to enter the market. So try one, bless Taiwan Travel Map. These are successful travel startups providing this type of uh, services in Taiwan that are still sustainable. Okay, non-standard accommodation, empowerment of technology and brand. So in Chinese region, um, we talk about Airbnb experience because it's providing not only the accommodation for the consumers, but also the local experiences, the local lifestyle tasting for their customers. That is the synergy of their brand and the local cultures where the Airbnb houses are located. Well, Tujia, Tujia Wang, okay, Tujia, that is the biggest um, Airbnb 
in China. So Airbnb in China is actually uh, much smaller than Tuja. Tuja, that is the um, big, biggest platform. They are doing face recognition and security network for their hosts. So as a platform, they have money, they have resources, they do a lot of um, things to add value for their hosts, for those people run the guest houses. The reason is that as a platform, I play my role well, as a guest, uh, sorry, as a host, I play my role well, so that different part of um, the, the business chain, they can combine together as a stronger service um, supply for their customers. Um, in the hotel side, service value turns to human touch, accommodation value turns in room. So it's about hotel technology. As we can see, mainly hotel, auto checking, smart key and robots start to be put in the hotel um, service chain. We are also um, need to take a look at the in-room music panel, vending machine in the room, and voice control IoT uh, function in the room. So that hotel runners, they realize that um, we can not only you know, enhance our service in the reception counter or outside the room, we should do something more creative and more customized in the room so that it could enhance customers' living experiences. Capital and data equals scalability of design hotel. So in the past, people think that if I want to do a unique, special design hotel, I will run out of money. I will have to focus on this one because it, this is so unique. It's not standardized. But in China, because of the data, because of the capital, they are kind of like copying the same model but creating very different, very special hotels everywhere in different cities. So for example, a tour hotel that has 250 hotels in China, this group, they are designating each one of their hotels in a different way. In the same business model, but different theme or different look. For example, they have their hotel in publication theme. They have their hotel in sports topic. They have their hotel in fashion topic. So every one of their customer go to different A-tour hotels would enjoy different experiences. How can they do this? It must be costly, right? Because they have capital, because they have investment from the stock market. So they can define themselves as a cultural creative practice of data. So they accumulate a lot of data of their consumers to um, provide a customer customized services. And they are the spiritual space in the city. They have a pick and theory. When the customers arrive in the hotel, they provide a hot tea to relax their customers. While their customers left the hotel, they provide the warm water for their customers to feel sweet. So this pick and theory creating successful um, service experiences for the customers and those customers could repeat coming back and coming back again. While the Facebook, Google, these huge players, they claim that they are not going to replace um, OTA or they are not going to do travel business because they want to use their technology to empower OTA, to empower their travel business partners in different markets. So search engine and social giants, they empowering instead of replacing travel business. But this is a question mark. When Google launched its um, <coughs> flight search function, when it launched its hotel ads function, it's doing meta search, right? is doing what OTA is offering you know, to their suppliers. So we should take a closer look at what these giants are doing. It's happening in Eastern Asia as already. So let's see if they are gonna take over some of the uh, strength of travel industry in the coming future. We should be aware of that. <coughs> This is the end of my presentation. Um, 
I want to say thank you for attending uh, this uh, presentation. And because of all the observation of Indian markets, I have um, one, one, how can I say, concept for you that from my observation, because I'm coming from Taiwan and, and I, I went to uh, China and Japan, all these uh, mature um, economies, mature markets, I can foresee that India um, as a um, 1.4 billion population, big country with diverse cultures, with emerging economy, I can foresee that after a few years, India will be strong in its strongest sector of industry, for example, IT, for example, manufacturing, for example, science or technology related industry. But travel business might not be the top priority for the government policy or for you know the industry to um, be profitable. Might not. But there is a great chance for all of you that has been in tourism industry for now which is to accumulate as many experiences, as many resources, as many customers as possible. So that at this moment, it might be challenging for you, but in the next generation, 10 years or 20 years later, you might be the richest one in India. You might be the most impactful, most influential um, industry in India, because that is the experience what Taiwan, China has been through. So let's give ourselves more encouragement and motivation to continue our great job in India. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. OK. Um, I think, OK. You guys have any question? So now I'm becoming the uh, host myself. You said like you provide something in education, uh, education in tours. So I would like to know more about it. You mean my educational programs yeah. and classes? Yeah. Okay. We have uh, diverse topics. For example, uh, we are training those hotel runners how OTA is running. Because for Taiwan guest houses, owners, or hotel managers, the thing that OTA takes 20 or 25 percent of their profits out of it. So they hate OTA sometimes. But we need to educate them that OTA is not your enemy. OTA is your friend. It helps you to lower your costs for advertising, for PR, for campaign. You only need to take care of your room images and your information on OTA platform and let it sell for you. So we're doing some concept adjustments and we're teaching them how to do smartly and how to take advantage of those technologies to enhance their business. That's one thing. And sometimes we do tour guiding, we do um, travel product designing, we do itinerary designing, we do operation. So all these, we, so we call it domain know-how, are the topics of our courses. Yes. Any more questions? Do we have any more questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Hi. Uh, OK, maybe I should take the. Do we have any more questions from the audience for uh, Mr. Daniel? Maybe I can ask one. Which is the best time to visit Taiwan? Best time? OK. <clears throat> um, best time to visit Taiwan will be um, throughout the year because um, we don't have that much obvious, you know, season difference. The degrees, sales degrees may vary 10, 10 degrees. So from 10 degrees to 25 or 30 degrees, you know, it's a good place to visit. 